Hey everyone, this is a video to show you how to get started with observing. So I am actually logging, going to log into the computer in the dome from my office uh, using remote desktop. So I'm on a Mac, I'm using, still using Microsoft remote desktop. Uh, if you are in the dome, you would log in um, directly into the computer there. And you should just get the password from me if you don't know it. So can you hear? And it's going to pop up then the Windows machine in the dome. OK. First thing we want to do, um, this is not essential if you're actually observing from in the dome, but this is absolutely essential if you're observing remotely. We want to start uh, the Amcrest web view, and this will give us access to the two cameras that are inside the dome. So we type in the URL 10.33.0.112. And our username for these are admin. And again, I can tell you the password. Okay, so this is one view. Actually, this is the best view, the camera uh, 112, to see if the telescope and the dome are aligned. Um, so I'm going to open another one. So we have kind of a perpendicular view. And so 10.33.0.113. Same, oops, same username, admin, and same password. OK, and this is kind of a side view. So this camera, you can actually see the second one we were just looking at. They have infrared lights that are coming on, and it's infrared camera. So it looks like there's a light on the dome, on inside the dome, but it's, it's infrared. It's not um, visible. And this kind of gives you a good view of our instrument port here. Uh, this is um, the telescope has two Naismith ports uh, for where the light comes out. So we have the primary mirror in the back. We have a secondary up here. And then we have a tertiary mirror that will send the light either out to the instrument port or to the IP's port, and that comes down and you can look through here. So um, I'm going to set this up tonight for IP's observing, but there's really only one other detail that would be different if you're doing the instruments or, uh, observing, at least for the initial setup. OK, so when you're reserving, observing remotely, you always want to keep an eye on uh, what's happening inside the dome as best as possible. <clears throat> OK, so we'll start. Um, I'm going to keep this uh, view right now, and we'll start the software that connects to the telescope. So that is the plane wave interface. It's this little negative sine curve icon. Double click on that. OK, so it brings up this nice interface. And then the first thing we want to do is connect to the telescope. OK, and then we say Enable. All right, so this is interesting actually already. The, so the telescope came up thinking, so we can see from the image, right, that it's it's azimuth. Usually we leave it, it's probably tipped over a little bit far right now, um, but it's not negative. It thinks it's at negative 33 azimuth. So, uh, and if we try and move it, I'm, it might tell us that we're, let's see if we can just move it upward. I don't know, it's gonna let us, okay. So we want to try and get it back within this box, at least to start with. Otherwise, it may uh, be unhappy. OK, so now it's coming up. And let's see where it looks like. All right, so it's definitely not the right um, altitude, but it should be able to fix itself. So the first thing then uh, that we want to do is go to the commands option within the mount tab and say, uh, send the telescope home. And now this is going to help the telescope reinitialize its position so it knows where it is pointing in terms of the altitude and azimuth. So we'll do that. And it's going to ask us to say OK. And then it's a good idea just to keep an eye on things. So first thing it tries to do is home itself in terms of azimuth. So it's always going to swing back to this position and then go back to just about where we were starting. Um, so it goes to the no wrap position and then to home, which is where it is now. And if we keep an eye on what's happening in the telescope control window, it actually is doing sort of a back and forth to find its um, optimum azimuth position. And then it will reset the encoders once it knows where it is. So you'll see it happened seven times. So now we're reversing in azimuth. And at the end, the motions are so small that we can't see anything on the video camera, but it is doing something. So you just want to keep an eye on this messaging here.
and then it will switch and it will do uh, altitude adjustment. Okay, so it just said it found itself, right? And, and now it's at 207, that's usually where it ends up. It's gonna have a little trouble to see how it finds itself in terms of where it thinks it is in terms of altitude. Okay, so again, we're getting to search seven. And again, this is where, you know, based on where it just started up, it thought it was, I think it's at very low altitude. Okay, and now it's done. Homing is complete. And you can see that our circle, which represents the position of the telescope in terms of azimuth and altitude, now has popped up right around 207 and 43 so 207 degrees azimuth, 43 degrees altitude. And we can see that right here in the mount status window, right? So it's telling us the azimuth of the telescope is 207, the altitude is 43. Okay, so our next thing is to open the dome and the dome and telescope are fairly well aligned right now. Um, and just to be a little bit safer, we wanna open the dome next and we don't want anything potentially falling from the dome onto the telescope mirror. So we're going to tip it down a little bit more, just set our altitude a little bit lower. Um, and so for that, we'd come over to this uh, telescope control. And so our azimuth, we can keep the same. We'll keep it at 207. And we'll make our altitude a little bit lower, maybe like 25 degrees. Okay, and then we can say go to, and the telescope will just tip over a little bit more. And that's just to protect that mirror from anything dropping off the dome. Not that we've ever had anything drop off the dome. It's just an extra precaution. Okay, so now we can uh, start opening the dome. So we go over to uh, the dome software. That's this infinity symbol here, Maestro. Double click on that and start. Okay, and um, if you're doing eyepiece observing, usually you want to do a fully open because it will open the both the top shutter and the lower shutter. And the lower shutter you need usually to reach uh, planets, for example, or, or lower, or higher air mass objects. But typically, if you're doing imaging, you don't want to be going this low. So you could potentially just open the top shutter and leave that lower one closed. So for now, we'll open the, all of it. So it's going to open the top first. So I just clicked on fully open. OK, and now we see that these status um, boxes are going to yellow, saying that it's you know starting to open. And now we can look at our video and we're seeing that the slit, so it's maybe just a little bit before sunset here. Um, so the sky is gonna look really bright, but again, we're just kind of doing this as an example. Uh, so that first thing that happens is that the top dome opens and yeah, that doesn't give a better view either, the bottom dome. So we'll see if stay with this. So this will take a while for the dome to slit to move all the way up and then the bottom is gonna come down. Okay, so once the top is up, we're gonna just check the alignment of um, the, the telescope and make sure that it's pointed through the slit and then we can initialize the dome. Even while it's still opening, we can do this uh, next step once the shutter gets up to the top because I wanna just bump up the elevation of the telescope so I can see the alignment better. Okay, so I'm going to move. I'm going to, again, keep the azimuth the same. So here I am in the telescope control window. I'm going to change the altitude to maybe like 50 degrees once the dome is all the way up. You can just uh, hum a little song to yourself. Check your email, send a few texts. And we are just about there. We'll see that the when it gets to the top, the open upper shutter will say that it's open, and then this lower shutter, shutter will start going. Almost there. Okay, good. So the top is open now. 
and lower should be, yeah, going to midway now. So it just says midway once it starts moving. All right, so let's bump our telescope back up so we can see how it compares to the slit. So I put the altitude up to 50, and I'm going to say go to that position. I kept my azimuth the same, still at 207. Move the telescope up. Okay, so this camera is designed so that you, sh you can get a good view kind of through uh, of the alignment, initial alignment. When the telescope's in the home position, you can be able to see that the slit is in line with it. In this case, it's not. So we want to go over to our dome, right? So the slit's a little bit too far to the right. Um, so we want to um, move the dome a little bit to the left. So we're going to click over here on the uh, maestro, the dome control, to start left, and we'll stop it. It's going to, you know, it takes a little bit to stop. It's a lot of moment momentum. Uh, but you do have to click to stop. So we're going to get it moving and then click stop when we think it's close and try and get these two lined up. So here we go. Moving, moving. I'm going to stop there. Okay, not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, so the telescope knows where it is now, right? The telescope knows that its azimuth is 207, right? And this is our degrees from the north point around in the eastward direction, right? So north is kind of on this side of the dome where the door is, and then east around passing the computer and now 270 degree, 207 degrees to where the telescope is okay so now we the dome doesn't know where it is we need to set up the dome so we go back to maestro to settings and for dome and we select azimuth general settings okay there's a lot of information here we just want to focus on calibrate too so once these are pretty well aligned and you know i could mess with this a little bit more to get it perfect but honestly it's just probably just fine um we again look at what the dome, what the telescope azimuth is, 207 degrees, and we tell the dome that that's where it is as well, 207. Okay, and then we click on the calibrate too. Okay, so if we exit out of this and go back to the main dome window now, you can see that it knows its azimuth is 207. So that's great. So now they're aligned. The dome knows where it is. The telescope knows where it is. And then the last step is to get the telescope or the dome to always follow the telescope, right? If we change target, we want the dome to move around so that the telescope is always looking through the slit and is not looking into the dome. So to do that, we click on the slave uh, option and then it will always, when it, wherever the telescope moves, the dome will follow. Okay. Um, so the last step now is to uh, go back over here. So there is, um, uh, the M3 tab here in the telescope window is telling us uh, the position of the third third mirror in the in the telescope. Remember, so the primary is back here, the secondary is up at the top of the tube, and then the tertiary, the third mirror, flips back and forth to direct the light out to port one, which is where the instruments are, or port two to select the eyepiece. So I'm just going to set it up right now for eyepiece observing. It's definitely the simpler mode. So I'm going to say go to port two, click on that. If you're in the dome, you will hear a little clunk when this finishes and then the mirror is into place. Okay, but if you're observing, observing remotely, and you can actually see this little bounce in the um, telescope's position when, when the mirror clicks into place, it actually bounces the telescope a little bit. Okay, and now we know that port two is active. So our next uh, step is then to start observing. So we are... Um, the telescope is initialized, the dome is initialized, the dome is going to follow the telescope, and so now we can pick up uh, something to observe. So we go to catalog, uh, you know, you could start with a bright star, for example, if you're doing imaging and just want to check your pointing, although it's usually pretty darn good. Um, so we could do a Messier catalog, let's say. So to pick a good one, right, we want to look at our local sidereal time. So it's right now it's 17 hours and 37 minutes. That tells us the right ascension of the objects that are crossing our meridian, right? Which is the line that goes from south to north through our zenith point, the great circle. And so we want to pick something around that, that has the right ascension around that local sidereal time, because that's really the optimum time to observe it. So we can sort our catalog by right ascension, look for something around, oh, it's decreasing, let's do it again for increasing. We'll go down to uh, 17 hours, somewhere around here. And then we also have to be aware of our declination, right? So we can't go to minus 30, right? Because we're in, our latitude is at 42, so you guys will have worked through this already. But, um, you know, there is a de declination, minimum declination range that we want to be aware of. 
So we'll look for something that is um, at a higher uh, declination. So we can go down here, for example, to the ring nebula. It's a little bit far over, hour and a half in right ascension, uh, but it is uh, fairly close to overhead. So we can select that. We select go to. Telescope is gonna move. And the dome's gonna follow. So you'll see that the dome obviously moves much more slowly than the telescope does. Uh, and so you do want to wait, um, you know, keep an eye on the cameras, make sure that the dome is into position. You can also keep an eye on this and it will show you, you know, the azimuth of the dome and make sure that that's lining up with the telescope if you're doing remote observing and, and wanted to do imaging here. And Another thing to note, right, is the air mass here, right? So how many atmospheres are we looking through? And so it's actually a pretty good time to observe the ring nebula. It's at an air mass of 1.05. Okay, once the dome starts moving, stops moving, right? So we're into position. The azimuth of the dome is 112. Azimuth of the telescope is 117. That's pretty good. Usually it will start to move if they're more than five degrees off. And we could just take that. Uh, I don't know if that's any more helpful to look at the other... Yeah, that's a nice overview of it, probably, from the side. So we can see now the telescope will be pointing at the object. The dome is in the right position, and you are good to go. So we will stop there.